Welcome to Bio 2020 at PLNU. I'm Dr. Cummings. What we're going to talk about in this video is just a very brief introduction to the prokaryotes and specifically the bacteria. Um, prokaryotes can be both bacteria or archaea, as I'll show you when we look at the tree of life in a minute. But as far as we know, there aren't any infectious archaea. So when we talk about prokaryotes in this class, we're going to be talking about the bacteria. So we're going to look at the tree of life and which domain uh, or domains the prokaryotes are in. We'll look at the bacterial genome as kind of an overview and then talk a little bit about what's going on in the cytoplasm. And then in later videos, we're going to look more closely at gram-positive versus gram-negative structural differences. We'll look at uh, flagella and fimbriae and pili, and then we're going to look at endospores and some inclusion bodies as well to get a nice three-dimensional perspective on, uh, on what the bacteria are really all about. This is a very, very important part of the class. So um, if you want to be a microbiologist in any way or form, uh, whether it's because you're a, a practicing nurse or, um, or you're working with athletes or you're going on to PA school, whatever it is you're going to do, having a good mental concept of the architecture of bacteria is very important. So I hope you'll put some, uh, some hard work into this and make sure that, that your mental model is nice and clear and accurate. Okay. The tree of life shows the bacteria, the archaea, and the eukarya, the three main domains of life. And we don't get below that domain level. Maybe you learned kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species. That works great for animals, this one branch. Uh, for the rest of it, uh, for the rest of, of living things, we start with domains. We've got the bacterial domain where all the bacteria are found. We have the archaea domain where another set of prokaryotes are found, right? Both of these are prokaryotic. The term prokaryote is not a taxonomic term, it's a structural term. And it says that they do not have significant compartmentalization, they don't have a nucleus, they tend to live single-celled, okay? And so both of these in the microscope look practically identical and they behave pretty similarly, with the exception that, as I said earlier, we're not aware of archaeal pathogens at this point. And then the third domain is the eukarya, where the various eukaryotes are. So puppies and people, um, mushrooms and molds, all the plants that we see on planet Earth, and then a wide range of really strange oddball eukaryotes, uh, including the protozoa, like Giardia, the slime molds, etc. So where are we on the tree of life when we talk about prokaryotes? We're thinking for this class in this, this domain bacteria. Here. Okay, so that's where I want your brain to be. We're in the domain bacteria now. Now the prokaryotic cell is really quite simple compared to the eukaryotic cell, right? If you watched the previous videos and you looked at a eukaryotic cell and how it's structured, a prokaryotic cell tends to be a lot smaller. So whereas eukaryotic cells on average are probably between 10 and 100 micrometers, um, prokaryotic cells, that's eukaryotes, then prokaryotes are usually on the order of one to five micrometers. They're always exceptions, but they're relatively small. So uh, single-celled, small, and what you see in this diagram is that there are no significant compartments. You're not going to find a nucleus. You're not going to find mitochondria. In fact, a single cell like this bacterium here is about the same size as a mitochondrion or a chloroplast. And so you couldn't shove one of those large organelles inside this poor little prokaryote. So what does a prokaryote have then? On the inside, we do have cytoplasm, right? Uh, an aqueous phase loaded with metabolites. Uh, all the metabolism of the cell is taking place here. We have lots and lots of ribosomes, which are organelles. They're just not membrane-bound organelles. We have the chromosome, and it's not found in a nucleus. It's found in a nucleoid region. In science, oid means sort of, kind of, ish. And so this is a region that kind of wants to be a nucleus, but there's no actual membrane wrapped around it. And so we, we find the DNA in this general region in the middle. And in addition to the single circular haploid chromosome that prokaryotes have, many of them, and in nature it's arguable that it's most of them, carry one or more plasmids, small circular haploid pieces of DNA that carry genes for, you could think of it as bonus information, right? If we cure them of their plasmid, uh, the bacteria usually can survive under normal conditions. We don't find any housekeeping or basic maintenance functions on those plasmids. It's extra things like virulence genes that make them pathogenic, or antibiotic resistance genes that allow them to resist uh, our antibiotics. So 
the chromosome in its nucleoid region in a prokaryote in a bacterium is going to be single, not, not multiple copies. It's going to be circular, unlike the linear eukaryotic chromosome. Haploid, as in you get one shot at every gene. There's not a, a pair, a homologous pair. It's in a nucleoid region, and then there are the plasmids that are really common. What do we know about plasmids? There are four main categories, and in reality, I'm a plasmid biologist. I can tell you in reality that plasmids, these different categories actually overlap a lot. F plasmids or fertility plasmids are the ones that carry out conjugation. We're going to learn more about all these plasmids later in the semester, but F plasmids can conjugate, can initiate conjugation between two bacteria and initiate the transfer of the plasmid. Our plasmids carry resistance genes on them. Bacteriocins are toxins that aren't toxic to you and me, they're toxic to other bacteria. So bacteria use them as sort of bio-warfare with one another and they become very important. They'll come up again later in the semester, but uh, it turns out some bacteria can beat up other bacteria with these bacteriocins if they've got them on a plasmid. And then virulence plasmids that carry virulence or pathogen in, uh, pathogenic or disease-causing genes, genes that allow them to cause disease. We're going to come back to all these concepts later in the semester, but it's important for you to understand that there are a lot of different types of plasmids out there, and you can have a conjugative F plasma that also carries some resistance genes in a bacteriocin. Um, in my work, we've found uh, conjugated F plasmids that have resistance genes, bacteriocins, and virulence factors all on the same plasmid. And so there's a lot of overlap amongst these four categories, but this is still a conceptual way that we think about the functions of plasmids. Now, if you remember from a few episodes back when we talked about the eukaryotic genome, we talked about its size in base pairs. Um, e. coli, for example, on the prokaryotic side, has about four and a half million base pairs. Compare that to the human genome, which is about a thousand times more base pairs. Uh, e. coli's got about 4,000 genes. Uh, humans have about 23,000 genes ballpark. Uh, e. coli has one chromosome. You and I have 46 chromosomes, or 23 homologous pairs of chromosomes. So we're talking about a much more um, whittled down genome. Right? It only takes 4,000 genes to be E. coli, whereas it takes 23,000 genes to be you and me, and in some plant genomes are even bigger than that. So we're talking about much smaller, more streamlined genomes. They're small, they're circular, and there is no nucleus, and then they have the bonus DNA in the form of the various plasmids. In some follow-up videos, we're going to talk about some of these external structures that you see, things like capsules, cell walls and plasma membranes, pili, these short hair-like structures, flagella, and then a couple others that you'll see in the upcoming video. So some take-home points from today, um, and you want to compare this video to the, the similar video that I did, uh, I think it was episode, I want to say six, where we talked about the an overview of a eukaryotic cell. You want to compare these two. So prokaryotes are in the domains bacteria and archaea, but we're just going to focus on the bacteria because that's where the, the infectious diseases happen. No known pathogens in the archaea. Bacterial genomes are simpler and smaller than eukaryotic genomes. They include a chromosome and multiple plasmids. And here's really the key structural architectural difference between prokaryotes and eukaryotes. Bacteria do not have internal compartments in the form of membrane-bound organelles. Eukaryotes, on the other hand, do. And there's a benefit to having them, and it comes at a cost. Bacteria do not have them. And it comes at a cost for not having them, but it also, um, uh, there are benefits to them that we can talk about in a later video.